Right. Um, I'm just remembering back to some of the comments of the Dalai Lama at this program last weekend where he was being interviewed by Richie Davidson and yeah. also by Amisha Jha, who was at Naropa just a few months ago. She's uh, another neuroscientist who's been working closely with, with the Dalai Lama through all of these different studies. And um, I think, you know, the main, one of the main things he was saying is that we can talk about leadership and how, how we should be and all of that, but the time you really know who a leader is is in a time of challenge. And, um, you know, who do we become? Who are we in those times of challenge? And if we don't have any training, and this is also the, the mm -hmm. promise of neuroplasticity, is that we can train ourselves, we can train our brains, we can actually overcome some of our reactivity. Mm -hmm. But if we don't train, then we do react. And when we react, we polarize. We go into mm -hmm. our fight, flight, you know, reacting place. And we will create a world that nobody wants. So I think what we're seeing as kind of the harbinger or the, the kind of portal into something new is this whole question of how can we train ourselves as leaders in new and different ways that bring out our humanity and that strengthen our core capacities that are unique to who we are as human beings and that allow us then to respond rather than reacting to situations. Yeah. I just recently did a study on authentic leaders and the, what I wanted to get at was the experience of, of authenticity in the workplace. And it's, it's hard to really get that, like how do you do it? You take a picture of it or a video, like how do you know <laughs> it's gonna happen and, and yeah, all of that. So. Mm -hmm. You kind of have to do it a little bit in retrospect, but um, other people who teach authentic leadership pointed me to people to interview, and so I did, and after distilling down what an authentic leadership moment is, the first thing that everybody said was, well, I, somehow I, I start those moments by just hanging out in that ambiguity mm. and, and not reacting, and that that's like, job number one for an authentic leader. Can you do that? So I think you're, you're pointing to that and there, there are so many things that inhibit us and so many things that get fired in our brain that keep us from doing that. So can we train that? So in the authentic leadership program we have, um, it's a 16 week program with um, two five day intensives and then in the 10 weeks in between people are doing projects where they're bringing all of it into their lives, they're getting coaching so that the actions are not something we save for later, but we, we do something about it and then we get feedback yeah. and, um, and learn from all of that. So mm -hmm. it's um, to the degree that people are able to open up to these new levels of um, authenticity and depth within themselves, we're finding that their effectiveness as leaders really increases. And so now the big challenge is how do we measure that so we, we need to bring research and science into, into our programs, which we'll be doing this spring. We have old models of leadership that, have, that are based on you know, command and control, uh, directing other people's work, evaluating it, and so on. And, and those are helpful in a certain framework. Um, what, we're, what I'm seeing anyway is that new models of leadership are needed now that have much more to do with, um, with leaders actually creating a space of conversation that is um, you know, a, a safe zone and how the leader does that is has a lot to do with his or her own ability to self-regulate and to invite people into that conversation. And then to, um, to bring questions rather than answers to the table. It's not that they don't have answers, but mm -hmm. if they can frame the question in such a way that it creates a solution space, Again, rather than a space of um, everybody can comply with my idea because mm -hmm. I'm the leader and I'm getting paid the big bucks, that solution space becomes um, a place from which everyone can draw uh, sustenance and inspiration and can mobilize together. So that leadership in today's environment has much more to do with leading the system and leading the hearts um, rather than simply leading the actions of people. So it's an emergent phenomenon mm -hmm. in groups, can be. So if you've studied system dynamics, then you know that the, the, the 
the whole is greater than the sum of the parts. And so emergent qualities come out of different dynamics. And so a lot of what we're doing, and especially in the authentic leadership work, is we know we can't create authenticity, mm -hmm. but we can create the conditions in which authenticity can be an emergent property of a group. Same with leadership. I love what you're saying. I mm -hmm. think that's really an exciting way to think about it. Mm -hmm.